Hey there board game maniacs and thanks for joining me for the third installment of this building a 3x3 portable gaming table. If you've been following along so far you notice that we actually built the, the frame and pretty much the, the construction of the 3x3 portable table and in the second video we put start building the train for inside of it so like the cork and the foam board and so on with the sandpaper and in this one we are going to finish it off by just painting up and detailing it up so it looks nice and that's it we're, we're just going to go to the game board now and we're going to start building it and getting this three-part mini series finished so we can go on and play some games on it that's what i'm waiting for for the painting part what we're using is we're going to mix some craft glue that you see here. You can get this for many dollars, so it's very inexpensive. It's water-based craft glue, and we're going to mix it with Elmer's school glue. You don't have to use Elmer's, just any white glue, which is, this was on sale when I bought it, so that's what I'm using. Some popsicle sticks, and, you know, some inexpensive, cheap brushes. This is called chip brushes. They're used for many, many things, so you can get these too as well as a hardware store. They sell them in bulk, and some, t some too as well, actually some throwaway cups. And I got a sponge in case I want to do a little bit more detail. This is like a sea sponge, but you could use any kind of sponge or no sponge at all. It's up to you, but you can see we got everything laid out and we're ready to start painting. So let's mix up the paint and start going to it. The way that I want to approach this paint job onto the city scene, I guess you want to call it, is there going to be three different color and there's going to be different variation in tone but we're going to stick with kind of like three colors it's going to be black we're going to go with a gray and a bluish grayish black if that makes any kind of sense but just follow along and and this don't include like the yellow that we're going to be doing and the white that we're going to be doing for the lines onto the road and everything that comes afterwards but for right now we're just going to concentrate on painting the majority of it first and we can use one cup we could use several cups but what i'd like to do is i always start off with the lightest color if possible and then i paint all the light then i go to a little darker and then darkest that way you keep the same cup for all of the colors mixed into it now you don't have to do that it's totally up to you but, you know, it's, it's here, neither here nor, the, nor there, I should say. So the first part we're going to paint is the asphalt. So it's the largest part of the board. Not the road, but the asphalt, like the, the concrete where you're going to set your buildings on and everything else. So to do that, we're going to go with the kind of like the lightest gray is going to be like the asphalt. A little darker is going to be the sidewalk and then the road's going to be the darkest. So to do that, we're going to start off with just some white paint, give it a good shake. And again, th all these paints were taken from a dollar store, very inexpensive. And we're going to dump in the whites here. It's a large area, so I'm going to use a lot of white here to start off. There we go. And... Now we're going to add a little bit of black to it, but the black when we're adding it, I'm just shaking it up. We're going to add it in intervals to see how dark we want it. So the more black you add, obviously the darker it's going to get for the gray. So right now we're just going to do a couple of drops. And we're going to mix up with the popsicle stick, see what kind of gray that will be. Cause I don't want to get like super gray, super dark. I guess the lightest part we're going to deal with first. Just mix that all up here. So you can see there, it's it's still very much white. Not like super, it is gray, but it's more white than gray. So I just want to add a little bit more black to it. Not a whole lot. that all up and I'm going to be putting a wash all onto the board too as well so it's going to darken it even more so be aware of that what I like to do is I don't mix up the exact color of what I want it to be when it's finished 
but I would kind of mix it up a little bit lighter because when I put the wash, it's going to be darker, and then you can dry brush over top of that. So there you go. That's the gray color. Now, just a little tiny bit because concrete tends to have, like the asphalt, tends to have a little hint of blue into it. So we're just going to put a little bit of blue and see what that looks like. And when I say a little bit, I mean just like a couple of drops here. Got to mix it up a little bit more. Uh, it's old paint, so it might be plugged up. So let's drop that in. It's a little too much blue that I want it, but hey, if it don't work, then we'll just mix up more. And you can always add a little bit more white to this. The amount of blue that I dropped in probably, I would say about eight drops, even though it kind of fell out in a clump. So there you go. That's like a, a bluish gray color. Get that on camera. I'm happy with that color. So we'll stick with that. Now, the only other ingredient that we're gonna add to this, just to help it out, is we're gonna add PVA glue. Cause when we put this paint onto it, I'm just shaking it up. When we put the paint onto the cork and everything, the PVA glue mixed in with it will help seal it too as well, which is great. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So they made the PVA glue, cause before we dump this in, you can see the, the paint on this is roughly like the hair. So the PVA glue we're going to put into it is roughly equal amounts of PVA to the glue. Maybe a little less, but not a lot less. A little bit more. Here we go. So yeah, so this is roughly half and half for the ratio. And the reason for the PVA glue again is so that it will just mix and seal when it dries. It's going to have that the seal coat. So instead of sealing it with like just black paint and PVA and then painting over it on top, it's kind of doing it all at once. So there we go. You can see that. And now we're going to go and we are going to start painting all the concrete or asphalt. For painting all the asphalt, it, it, there's no trick to it or anything. You just got your PVA and your chip brush. And what I like to do, because cork is very porous, it's got a whole bunch of pieces kind of together, is I will do a kind of like a, a stabbing motion here. And the reason why I do a stabbing motion is so it will fill in all of that so that after you do your first coat and you go back and you look at it and you're like, oh, look at that, there's, there's spaces in between it. But by doing it this way, what it does is you're filling in all them little gaps. So that's why I like doing it this way. I'm not gonna bore everybody by, you know, you watching me, me paint all of this, but after the board is all painted in this color and it's dry, we'll be back and we'll be on to the next step. Now that I got the base coat of the bluey scray down on the asphalt, now we're gonna be, while this is drying, we're gonna do the uh, sidewalks. That's the name of it. And all I did is I took the bluey scray that we already had and I darkened it with some black paint. So you can see there, it's, it's still gray, but it's a darker gray because it's going to give a good contrast. And then the road is going to be like a blackish blue. So all in all, it's going to turn out to be a pretty cool contrast. So the way we paint this is the same. We just dip it in and kind of Stab it, or be careful, I should say, when you're stabbing. You don't want to get it onto the, the bluish gray while it's drying. It's still on camera. Yeah, I was just looking. Uh, all right, so yeah, just keep going like this. Be very gentle, cautious, so you don't get it. If you get it on the road, it's okay, because the road is going to be black, like a bluish gray black, or a bluish black. So you can get it all, no big deal. So I'm not gonna bore everybody by painting this. When that part is painted, I'll be back and we'll continue on with painting the row before we throw the wash on. Now that the sidewalk is painted, the next thing we're doing is we're gonna make kind of like a, a 
bluish black mix to paint the road. So all I added there was more blue than black, but when I mixed it up, there was still a little bit of the gray inside the cup and it kind of gave that, uh, that bluish black look to it. So we can always change it more. Now what I'm going to do with this, cause I have like a small detail brush. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the edges because if I use a big brush, what's going to happen is it's not going to work very well. So I'm just painting the edges as careful as I am. Just like so. I'm going to go all over this and then I'm going to paint that too as well, the sandpaper. So when that's all done, Again, I don't want to bore everybody by watching me paint this because there's no skill to it. It just be cautious and when you're painting around the uh, sidewalks that you don't go onto them. So I'll be back when this is all done. Now that I got the road painted too as well, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to put wa a wash on the entire thing and that is both the, the road and the asphalt. Now, this wash, you could use like known oil or Agrax Earth Shade, but it'll take a heck of a lot of wash. So we just whipped up our own. And all of this is a little, probably about two or three drops of any kind of dish soap with black acrylic paint and water to kind of this consistency. And you can see how, how thick or how, uh, not thick, but how dark you want it by brushing up. I use it on a clear container all the time so that when I do it, I can see kind of like where it's going to settle, where it's settling into the plastic cup and how much black is going to be there. We may do what is called a buff egg too as well. So you put it on and just take some paper towel and you buff it out. We'll see though. So I'm just going to start applying this and it, it's pretty simple. It's just going on. You don't, you don't want to have your brush like super, super saturated here. Because you want to be able just to have it so that you're, you're filling in whatever it is, the little spots or cracks or what have you, even the ones that you drew and cut it with the X-Acto knife. And then after that, you may be like, oh, I want to buff it out now. And buff it out is just taking some uh, clean, dry paper towel or a rag and just dabbing over it. So we may do that too as well which we are going to do regardless, but to the degree is it's going to depend on how this looks. So again, just keep adding it out, adding it on top. I mean, and once that's done, then it's just a matter of just taking the brush. I mean, not the brush, but the paper towel before the paint dries and kind of buffing it out, dabbing it and pushing onto us. All different things, they're all different techniques. You can get some texture by crumbling up the paper towel or rag and then kind of dabbing it. You'll get that texture and force over it. Anyhow, we're going to do that. So again, it takes some paper towel and just dab it onto it. And then after that's all done, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. For the buffing out or what have you, again, it's just some paper towel crumbled up and we just do a dabbing motion because we want to try to grab like get the texture of this cork board because of all the little spots into it. We want to make it look dirty, but not like too dirty and filthy. And it's got to be very like natural. So again, just dabbing like so. So I'm going to continue doing this. And when this is all done, we'll be back and I'll show you exactly what the dab method looks or brush out, buff out, whatever you want to call you it. You can see there it does give a little bit more of a dimension to it. Again, it's dirty. It's supposed to be like, in a bustling city like possibly New York or what have you. So because of that, it is going to be dirty because traffic, pollution, you name it. So, but we're not stopping there. We're actually going to be using some blue now. It's uh, peacock blue, just another crap paint. And doing the same process by super watered down with a little bit of dish soap too as well. And we're gonna go over the whole thing again, but now in blue. And the reason why, because we're going to give that just a little bit of a, a hue of blue onto it. Now the road already is like a blackish blue, 
more black than blue, but it still have, but we're gonna, again, just put it over everything. And we're gonna do the dab method yet again. And then after we're done with that, we are going to follow up with a burnt umber. And the burnt umber is going to be two as well, like a watered down. Same as this, consistency, very watered. Just to give a, it's kind of like putting a wash on, but I don't know if it's more of a, a stain than a wash, like a light stain coat. But anyhow, that's what we're doing next when that's all done. So again, remember the blue and then the brown for the bird dumber is after that. And then when that's all done, we'll be back. All of the stain is on. Now again, that is the, uh, the black wash stain, wash slash stain, and then the blue and then the burnt umber. Now what we have to do is, I got it all dabbed off, but there's still some puddles here and there. So I'm gonna leave this dry completely, which will only take like maybe a millisecond for you, but in essence it may be, it may be like, you know, eh, about 20 minutes or so. And once this is all dry, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start doing some dry brushing on, again, the sidewalks and the road itself. The, bring the, the road up a little bit bright, brighter. Because remember, this is all sandpaper and you got all the nice texture. So if we run like a nice light gray over the road, then it's going to really start making everything pop onto it. So that's where we're at. So just stand by, let this dry. And then when we come back, it'll be time for some dry brushing. The next step we're going to do, since this is all dry nails, we're gonna do which is dry brushing. I'm gonna be dry brushing the sandpaper to bring out the texture for the road. Now, what we're doing is we're just mixing up white with a little bit of black and getting a different type of gray tone. You can see there, maybe I can get it on camera. There you go. So yeah, and we just take our chip brush, we dip it in the paint. Kind of wipe off the excess and then, you know, on a piece of paper towel or what have you. Just to clean it up a bit. And then it's just a matter of gently going over it. Now, how much dry brushing you want to do or no dry brushing, it's, it's totally up to you really. But it's pretty easy. Just dry brushing away. Pretty simple. Now what we're going to do too as well is with the same color gray, we're gonna go over the sidewalks too as well and bring up all of the natural the race parts to highlight. So after we're done with that, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like when I finish doing all the dry brushing because I don't want to bore you. I don't want the video to be like, you know, an hour long or what have you because I want to try to keep the video down to a small time frame. You can see here all the dry brush is finished and the next step what I'm going to do is we are going to put the yellow lines going down this road. Now, where we're doing the yellow lines down the road, we're gonna use some masking tape and after we mask it off, then we are going to just cut the designs out and we're gonna paint on the yellow or sip on the yellow paint. So I'm gonna get our masking tape, I'm gonna set this up right directly in the middle because this is six inches, so in the middle is three inches and we're just going to uh, even out the two yellow line strips that is going on the road. And once I put the masking tape down where it has to be, I'll be back so that we can actually go in and cut into the masking tape so that we can put the yellow down. Now that we have the masking tape down, uh, we did do the line. So I didn't measure from here because the foam, is, it, it's cut straight, but you know, it's kind of indented when I was doing all the drawing. So I measured from the outside wood edge to the center of this, which was 18 inches. And then I just measured equally for two lines. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take our X-Acto blade and we are going to cut out each one of these individual lines. And when that's done, we're gonna stipple on the yellow, but after I'm done cutting it, I'm gonna start stippling. I'll be back to show you exactly what that is. But just be aware, double and triple check your measurements. I don't even think this is still straight and I double and triple checked everything, but if it's a little crooked, it's a little crooked. I'll fix it in the long run. But anyhow, let's go on. Now that we have the masking tape down and the lines cut out, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting the yellow 
for the lines onto the road. Now we're going to be doing a couple of different steps for this. We're going to be using like a chip brush and that sponge that I showed you in some of the material that we're going to be using, we're going to be using this too as well. This may be just for more of the road color to make it look like the, the lines are all worn out and, and so forth. But what I am expecting for this to happen, because it happens in almost every masking that you do, if, and that is, is the yellow is going to bleed through a little tiny bit. And if it happens, not a big deal, because that's why we got the sponge here with the, for to put on the road color to make it look even more broken down a bit. But the yellow I'm using here is just bright yellow. It's from the dollar store. And that's pretty much it. So I put some into my, uh, into a, a cup here and it's not watered down. You don't want to deal with watered down paint for this step because if it is watered down, there's more of a chance of it bleeding. So you just have to be aware of that. And I am not brushing it on. I am dabbing it because that way it's going to help me with it not bleeding hopefully. But anyhow, that's what it is. So I'm going to continue doing this with this dabbing or stabbing motion like so. And then when this is dry, I'm going to peel it off, check it out, and we'll be back to see what it looks like. The yellow lines are done. I removed the tape and you can see there's some little spots that have to be fixed up. But again, that's why we have this sponge, but we're not going to start going with the sponge and fix the yellow lines up yet because there's still some more lines that we have to put on and the lines that we got to put on are for the crosswalk. So I'm going to take this off for the lines for the crosswalk and I'll be back. But just to let you know that the, the major seam is right here for the board. And I may put like a... Uh, one of the stop signs are the white lines here for the stop on that side and on this side and the crosswalk is going to be on this part of the board. But once I tape it all off, I'll come back because we're going to do the same process that we did for the stippling of the yellow. We're going to stipple for the white. You can see here I have it all taped off now. So you have your crosswalk and then this is where the car is going to come to a stop and that's where the car is going to come to a stop to let people cross the road. Now, I'm basing this again off of just a, a basic city street. I, I filmed pictures, I Googled them, and this is what I came up with. So I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna stipple on white now onto this, let this dry, remove the tape when it's done, and we'll be back so we'll show you what it looks like. And then it, it, we're almost done with this build, completely finished. I removed the tape from the white, and this white that I had, because I ran out of the, the acrylic white from the craft store, the dollar store. So I used airbrush white and the thing is it was very watery. So it bled through. So I'm just using the black and I'm touching it up, but also too as well, what you notice is this black is a different shade darker than the blackish blue and the dry and the, uh, where I did the dry brushing too as well. I'm forgetting what my words are, but in either case, uh, what I did is where I mixed the black up, what I noticed it was kind of like a happy action. You see some little dots that are going on here and every road has patchwork. Well, not every road, but most roads will have patchwork. And that's all I did for the patchwork is I just took some black on my small brush and I just kind of put it in little spots just to signify like there's there was road work that, that was fixed onto it, because that's pretty cool. So I'm just kind of painting in some design here for some road work stuff. Uh, let's get like round, uh, let's go right here. So just so you can kind of see it. I'll go in tighter shot because I want to show you something else that I think was a happy accident. So all I'm doing is I'm patching like uh, I'm not patching. I'm painting some black on the road just to make it a little bit big in spots. Like when I say big in spots, I mean patches are big in spot. So that's going to dry. It's going to be a little shade darker. So it'll kind of look like it has a little bit of road work going on to it. And I kind of discovered that, but it was a happy accident and I'm liking it. 
So let's go for a tether shot so I can show you one more thing that I said that I think is a happy accident too as well. With another happy accident, like I said, what I really like about it, I'm keeping it for the most part. Now, originally I spoke about using a sponge and just going over the lines, but the lines are, are you know, somewhat a little messy because they did have a bleed through, which I kind of liked. But on top of that, if you look a little closer at some of the lines, you can see there's green. Because what that means is that the paint that I put down for this one, I had to tape over top of it and I pulled the tape off. It kind of pulled some of the black off in areas. But if you ever notice, well, around here, patchwork that's done on roads or roads that are fixed and then they get damaged again, they have a different color concrete underneath. It's not black, it's not gray, it's a brown sometimes, or sometimes even I've seen like a, a greenish color. So because of that, well, I'm gonna leave it like it is because I really like the look of it and it gives it more of this idea that, you know, the road's been paved long ago. They're not keeping up with the maintenance and so on and so forth. You can make your own story up for it, but I really like the way that it is. So that's why I kind of kept it like that. The next step that we're going to do is all of the pine board, the knotty pine that surrounds it i was going to just stain it like clean this up and stain it but then i kind of uh like the idea of painting this black just uh, originally what i planned on doing honestly is painting it like a, a gradation and then painting like building uh like a, a cityscape onto it but i'm not going to go that far because if we're doing like an apocalyptic game or a game that don't have any buildings like that in the background then it's silly to have that because it'll take away from the amount of games that we can play onto this board so what i'm going to do is just paint all of the inside black and when i'm done painting it i'll come back but to just let you know i'm using actual house paint you can see there i'm going to paint all of the inside the inside like the pine black with house paint and instead of like the craft there's acrylic paint because it will stay on it, but I just want to use proper paint for that just to give it more of a longevity in the, into it so it'll just withstand the test of time a little better. So after done painting the, uh, the pine board on the inside, we'll be back and I'll show you what it all looks like. Nice and pretty. All of the black is painted on the outer rim and I'm going to call this done. I could add so much more to it. I was thinking on doing some little tiny like newspapers and strewing them around but it's not necessary i can always add that later on if need be so i'm just going to call this done a done deal i'm really really liking it it turned out nice i can't wait to actually start playing on this because it's going to be fun and plus it is uh exactly three feet by three feet don't have to worry about anything else don't have to worry about dice coming out of here because it's so high and we can just build upon it more and more. Whew. I, again, I, I'm, I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you followed along with me. If you have any questions, by all means, just email us at boardgamemaniacs at gmail.com or you can just comment directly onto this video. I'm going to be try to remember to post all the dimensions into it and just in the video too as well where I talked about the type of material used and everything else, it should be pretty self-explanatory on how to follow this. It's not a difficult build. It's just a matter of taking some time, making sure you have all the, the materials need before you start. Like myself, I had it, but I ran out of white, so I had to compromise and use airbrush white, which was more runny and I had to fix up more. But I don't know, it turned out good. I, like I said, I could add a lot more and I could add more streets or parking lot or what have you, but I don't want to. I want to keep this as basic as possible so that in the, in the long run, I'm going to be able to play much more different games on this besides just one or two. That's it. So let me know what you thought of it. Like I said, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Board Game Maniacs, the one that you're on right now because you're watching it from our YouTube channel. Hit the bell notification to get notified when other videos such as this becomes available. Also too as well, is look into the our next video it's probably going to be another construction video uh, it may not be exactly the one following this one
but we're always going to be building more terrain stuff. It's been a while since I built a game board though, and I miss building terrain such as this because it's a lot of fun. It's very enjoyable, and uh, I, I just find it very relaxing, you know, and if it stresses me out because something's not working the way I picture it in my head, I'm stressful, but once I finish it, I feel so relaxed and so calm and so much better because I did actually finish it off. And that's my spiel. So I hope you had fun. We'll see you in the next video. And most importantly of all, and that is, got the hiccups again. Jeez, right at my tagline. <sighs> Anyhow, be a maniac. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Boo. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs, be a maniac.